Hello and welcome to a special edition of Out and About. I'm Diane Gonzalez. Instead of our usual discussion on events going on around the community, today we're going to celebrate the life of Tom Lorenz, who had a major role in creating and managing Pinnacle Bank Arena and also bringing new life to Pinewood Bowl. Since the fall of 2009, Tom was a regular on Out and About. In fact, we were planning a new show just a few days before he lost his battle to cancer on October 1st. This is not going to be a sad show. Rather, we'll talk about the tremendous positive impact Tom had on our community and on many, many people. Joining me today is another Out and About regular, Jeff Mall from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Also joining us is Kent Walgamoth, who is a longtime entertainment reporter for the Lincoln Journal Star. And my third guest is Tom's son, Kyle Lorenz. Thank you all so much for being here. And Kyle, again, condolences to your whole family. Tell us how your family found its way to Lincoln way back in 1996. <laughs> well, before we moved to Lincoln, my dad had his own business making uh, custom cabinets and mantelpieces. Uh, had his own wood shop. He worked with my grandfather a lot of the time. Uh, he worked for St. Charles Kitchens, making a lot of different uh, storefronts and countertops, that sort of thing. Um, and the business had been going pretty well for him for a long time, but he was looking to get out of that industry. And his, uh, his passion was obviously running arenas and being a part of the entertainment industry. And he called up some of his friends, who he had many of, and uh, found out there was a job opening here in Lincoln, Nebraska. Applied, got the job, and we moved here in 1996. Spent a little time living in a motel, right? We did. The <laughs> old Villager Inn off of O Street. Yeah. Um, when we got here, that, uh, that was the first place that we stayed for a few weeks uh, before we could move into the house that we were renting at the time. Uh, five of us in a one-room hotel room for a couple of weeks was a great way to get to know your family. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now I know um, all of us first met Tom, of course, when he was assistant manager at Pershing Auditorium. Um, so he's been part of that entertainment community for a long time. He's actually uh, uh, grew up near Chicago mm -hmm. and uh, has a little bit of uh, an affinity and loyalty for some Chicago sports teams, I he understand. He does. He uh, passed that on to all of us. We are huge Chicago sports fans in my family. Uh, I think the Chicago Cubs come first in our, in our household. And uh, we spent a lot of time, whenever he had time off, watching any type of Chicago sports that we could. We always knew all the players. We always knew how they were doing, which, if you're a Cubs fan, was not always all that great. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then... In 2016, we finally got our moment. And uh, I remember we were at uh, my dad's favorite bar in town, um, uh, Mulligan's, out on uh, Highway 2. And... We were standing there for hours through the rain delay, waiting for the game to come back on. And when it finally came back on and the Cubs won it, I remember there's a great picture of this too. We held up the W flag that he had in his office for years and uh, we watched the Cubs win the World Series together. It was a really special, really special moment for us. The fun memories. Now, Kent, um, you wrote that you broke one of your rules by becoming good friends with one of your sources. <laughs> Tell yeah. me about your friendship with Tom. Well, that's sort of journalistically verboten, right? You're not <laughs> ever supposed to be friends. But you, I, and I, and I wrote this, and it's absolutely true. If you knew Tom, you couldn't help but be friends with him. That's just how the guy was, and I, and. It, it sort of developed like really naturally, but also really quickly. And the thing that I remember first, and this wasn't right when he came to town, but as soon as he became the manager over at Pershing, before every show, and I mean literally every show, I'd go in his office and we'd sit there and talk about whatever, usually that show, and then what could we do? And then he'd also talk, he had a, Back in the old days, you had to have a computer, I think this might have even been a floppy disk, <laughs> of the, uh, here are the potential acts that are out, right? And here's what they cost, and here's the size of places they play. And every time we'd see all the ones that were, oh, we'd really like to get that, and there's no way you could have that at Pershing, because they right. were too big or too expensive or whatever. So, but we'd talk about everything. The W flag, he had a signed, basketball from Johnny Orr up on the wall. And then at times we'd uh, watch whatever sporting event we wanted to watch on the television. And 
I will have to say there are plenty of opening acts that got missed. <laughs> 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 but yeah, and and it just grew from there, and it was it was to the point. I I would guess I talked to him twice a week, every week for twenty years. I don't know, however long it'd be twenty, probably close to twenty years, maybe a little more. So, you know, and so it wasn't all just talking about the entertainment business, but there were a lot of it that was. Well, Tom's dream and the community's dream of having big name acts come back to Lincoln again was, was fully realized with Pinnacle Bank Arena and Pinewood Bowl. And Jeff, talk about the overall impact on the community. You're in charge of making Lincoln a destination. What did Tom's hard work bring to this community? Well, I, I, Diane, I think in, in, in you know, li listening to Al Kent and, and um, Kyle talk about their dad, I mean, I started my career in this industry at the Villager Courtyard and Gardens Hotel. <laughs> and I remember when we would have buses of the acts that would play Pershing Auditorium back in the day. And that's just a small example of the impact that Tom's ability to bring in talent and, and bring in um, the types of things that really drive tourism that made him special. He was different than anybody else that he would tell me about in the industry in that a lot of times in the major markets, they don't give the opportunity to some of the local and state events that we have the ability to do in Lincoln. And I remember the discussions about when we took Tom and brought Tom and appreciated Tom from Pershing over to Pinnacle Bank Arena. It was telling the story that the market in Lincoln is different than any other market across the country and that you have to be able to do state high school tournaments. You have to be able to do business expos brought to you by your local chamber of commerce. And you have to be able to do car shows. It's not always about the big ticket concerts. Tom had the ability to understand the community and what drove this community better than anybody. And he was like having a family member in that building. And that's the way he ran it. And that's what made us a special tourism destination. And talking to Al Kent here a little bit too and listening to his stories was, it was always with Tom for me, um, can you tell me something that might be coming to the arena? Yeah, and he'd say, right. you can't tell anybody. <laughs> and I'd go back to the office and I'm like, I want to tell everybody. <laughs> it was so hard to keep some of these secrets about the things that your dad brought into this community. But yeah, his impact, his ability to put heads in beds and feet in the sheets in our hotels, <laughs> he drove tourism because of his unique way of understanding community and not just the big box that he was in charge of. One, one of the stories I enjoyed from his memorial was we're talking about, you know, maybe not the big show, but monster trucks. He loved monster trucks, <laughs> and so do many people in the community. He really did enjoy that show. We, uh, we always made sure to save him a seat on the aisle, so whenever we went to those shows, he could come running from his office and sit down and watch for a little while until he got pulled away to do something else. But it was just one of those things that in a smaller market, in a smaller venue, he wouldn't have ever had the chance to do that. Right. You know? And he nev we never did it at, at Pershing, to my knowledge, but when he finally got his big arena and he was able to bring the monster trucks in, I, he's, it put a big smile on his face. <laughs> and it was probably one of the bigger smiles I've ever seen. <laughs> he stood at that podium in front of that arena when we cut that ribbon. This guy was like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> he knew how big this thing would be for the community. Mm -hmm. And you look at the acts and stuff over the years. There wasn't a show that missed this community because of Tom. Now, Kyle, you've also said that one of the things that impressed you most about his work was what he did with Pinewood Bowl. Here's this beautiful venue out in Pioneers Park that was so underused for many years. And he really brought that place, like I said, back to life. Well, it was great when we, when we first got here. I was, I was big into community theater, and I did a bunch of shows at uh, Lincoln Community Playhouse, and I did the musicals out at uh, Pinewood Bowl. And he would always come to all of the shows, and he had a great time, but he just kept looking at the arena, or at the uh, Pinewood Bowl, and saying, we could do so much out here. There's so many cool things that we could have out here. And he, he had all these ideas and dreams and visions and stuff. And being the guy he was, he wouldn't sit on that. He pushed for it, and he made it happen. And seeing the transformation, just the last few shows I got to go to last season, um, from where it was in the early 2000s when I was doing shows out there to now is incredible. And it wasn't solely Tom Lorenz who did that. There was a huge group of people who put a lot of effort into that. But I see it as his pet project, it's something that he felt very strongly about and is very successful today. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was. Now, Kent, Tom helped make the arena one of the top performing venues in the country, according to market size. How did he do that? Was it his internal knowledge of that industry? Yeah, two things, I think. One, um, 
it was, you know, knowing how to pull the levers to get people here. But it was also, and this was knowing who to bring, right? Mm -hmm. And I, talking about the phone calls, I'd get a call. Oh, do you think XYZ would draw 6,000 or 8,000 or at Pinewood 4,000 or whatever? Because that was the number needed to break even, right? The idea wasn't to, to make a ton of money on the shows, it was to bring a, the shows that you could at least break even on and get people to start to spend their money on concerts on on because what what had previously happened in Lincoln is there weren't enough shows for people to develop a regular habit of going out to a show and spending the money that it takes to do that well you have to bring in the shows that people want to go to to get that started he had a sense for that that was uncanny and often you know I can't I can think of a current example <laughs> He called me up and said, what do you think Pentatonix would do? And I said, maybe eight, max. Um, let's just say that show's gonna do a lot better than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no clue. I mean, so he had, he was kind of, he had a sense, and I don't know where it came from, of what would go here. And then once you get that going, then you can bring in more of these, and the bigger you get, then you make the mark on the industry, the industry recognizes it, and, mm -hmm. and it becomes easier to get people in here. And that's particularly was the case at Pinewood, right? Because right. when they started, it was a completely unknown venue that was basically a stage in a park. Not and much, not many amenities backstage. Uh, no. <laughs> not many. Kyle there was, yeah. Pinewood. There was, was that sparse. old green trailer. <laughs> right, <the> trailer. <laughs> <laughs> that was all. And yet it went and it grew and grew and it got to the point. And then to uh, sort of piggyback on what Kyle was talking about, and you had a big Im I impact on this, he had these ideas of here's how we're going to mm -hmm. turn this thing into a real concert amphitheater venue. And over, what would it be, four, four or five years? Yeah. Last four yep. or five yep. years, it, that has actually mm -hmm. happened. And you don't think too much about it from the outside, but as soon as you go in and you see those two new st light towers and concession stands that frame it, the new, you know, the ticket office, ticket office yep. Yep. The, and then especially the backstage, the dressing room and all of that, that dressing room, Wilco came, played here, loved the place, and said, we'll never come back unless you get a real dressing room. <laughs> okay, there's a real dressing room. That brings, that brings people in. And he was, the last time we were out there, just walking around, not for a show, he was already, he had more, I need to figure out how I can raise a million dollars to put a new roof on the place. Mm -hmm. And I want a terrace over here and put VIP over here and terrace over here and put... And he had all those ideas going and hopefully maybe somebody will follow up on that just as, I mean, in part, his legacy as well. That's right. what I wanted right. to ask Jeff right. about too. You mentioned he was always looking forward, looking to the future. What, what kind of impact long-term will he have on the community? I think for, for Tom and a legacy and trying to come up with all the right things to say in this moment with Kyle in the room is, I think Kyle was, or Tom was, and looking at Kyle, I see Tom is, he was all about family. And it was family first with what Kyle experienced growing up with your entire family. But the family that is Lincoln, Tom would do anything for anybody at any given moment in this community. And, and I think you were telling a good story during the Celebration Life about trips to the, your, to the grocery store with your dad. People lined up in the aisle wanting to talk to Tom <laughs> about something. And, and, and whether Tom was gonna try to find a way to help them with tickets or talk to them about stuff that's upcoming. Tom was always about the family that is Lincoln. And I will quickly say this story. I grew up, my wife and I raising two young daughters. We have three kids now, but our two daughters, our first two were huge Rascal Flats fans. And your dad had a good relationship with the Rascal Flats group, right? Yeah. Or the, 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 the booking that brought them into town. And they were playing Pershing Center and I had two kids that were still drinking out of tippy cups. <laughs> and I called Tom and I said, I got two big fans of, of Rascal Flats. 
We were the only people at Pershing Municipal Auditorium back in the day with two kids with tippy cups watching Rascal Flats. <laughs> and Tom found a way to get the roadies to come up and deliver guitar picks to each of my girls. They remember that to this day. That's Because sweet. of that family mentality. That's and, cool. Uh, there, he was always somebody you could call and bend his ear and he'd always say, what can I do for you? And we talked about this. and. That's just his legacy, I believe. And it's going to be really hard for me to find another person that will reciprocate that same family mentality. And I will do everything I can for you to put you in a better position. And that's what Tom did for this community. There'll be a new manager for Pinnacle Bank Arena, but there will never be another Tom. No, no. No, and you know, at the service, the tribute from the folks, the staff there at Pinnacle Bank Arena was so, so beautiful because he created a family there too. Yeah. Absolutely true, and, and he, I mean, he spent as much time there as he did at home uh, for uh, many, many years, but we all felt like we were all part of Tom's family, and he cared for each and every one of us exactly the same. All right. At the risk of going on for several hours telling Tom's stories, I've got one more question for everyone, and, and Jeff, I'll start with you. Um, what are the qualities you admired most in Tom? He was always thinking about what's next. Um, he never rested on that, that big concert announcement. He was always thinking ahead. And I think beyond that is that he kept that family intact from Pershing and how many of those people mm -hmm. still are in that building today, relatively a little bit lost without their father figure, the person they could go sit in the office with. So just that he, he, he developed those relationships and he was always looking forward. Okay. Hmm. I guess it, it maybe look at this on a two levels, right? On the sort of professional level, I think that it was, he had this ability of knowing how to work the entertainment world and then being really transparent about how it happened. He didn't hide things, right? He didn't try to make them bigger or smaller than they really were. And that translated in a lot of ways, and I, I guess I'll come up with an example I'll use, is back oh, 15 years ago maybe, there was that Lincoln is a Music City effort that went on, okay? He wasn't even invited to the meetings explicitly. He'd show up for every meeting and say, how can I help? How can I help you guys do this, okay? That's you know, it wasn't about getting credit for it. It was about develop, here's what I need to do to develop this and to help. And, you know, and it was, it could be little things. Like he loaned fencing to the uh, zoo fest every year. Mm -hmm. Well, that saves them $10,000. That might be the difference, right? So it was that kind of thing. Personally, I've ne I can't say as I've ever had a better, more loyal friend and you know, people uh, have told me that when I'd call, if he was in the office there, he'd go, oh, that's Kent, I need to talk to him and chase the people off to talk to me. <laughs> there are very, very, very as in probably nobody else that that's the case with. So there's that, that is what I'm really going to remember and what I really miss already, and it hasn't been a month or just a month. And, and Kyle, I'm sure you knew him as a man all about faith and family. Absolutely. Um, I think the thing that I admired most about him, apart from the fact that he was a fantastic dad to me and my brother and sister, uh, he was an excellent husband. Uh, he, he gave us an example to follow and uh, we all continue to try to be more like him every day. But I think the thing that has made the most impact on me is as a manager and as a, a guy in a, a relatively high position in the city and in the community, um, he never thought himself above any task or any person. He was more than willing to step in wherever needed and do whatever was needed to do. I mean, he was shoveling snow in front of Pershing. <laughs> he was uh, you know, putting chairs away at the end of concerts. He would cup out after basketball games. It, it was, nothing was above him. And he was more than happy to jump in and work side by side with every one of his employees. That's something that I try to, try to emulate in my life as well. Kyle, Kent, Jeff, it's been great remembering our good friend and your dad, Tom Lorenz, who really did make a huge impact on this community. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
Uh, thank you all for joining us as well, and we hope to see you out and about. We really appreciate the way that all of the citizens of Lincoln have supported Pinnacle Bank Arena. Um, we love to see the changes that have happened within the district here, with the new developments, with Huddle coming in, with the Olson Associates building, all, of the, all the new different businesses. This has been an amazing project. Uh, the city leaders that put this together uh, certainly should be uh, thanked. And uh, it has happened the way it should. Uh, the Pinnacle Bank Arena came up, the development followed, all the great things that happened came along uh, after, after we opened. Uh, we've got great basketball teams. Uh, we have exciting events, and uh, it's just been a pleasure to be part of this.